backseat without knockout. Do you know that one of the cars is on the Yes, to land this Mr. Fish. Walter Gretzky. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm still standing beside you. Hey, wow. Sorry, <laughs> Take two. Oh, sure. Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. They're crafted with 48-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Hey, everybody. I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Welcome to CNBC TV Spring Special for 2016. We're saying farewell to the flakes and gearing up for the changing of the seasons here in Atlantic Canada. We've gathered together our A-team of experts to take you through what's new and everything from what to wear to garden care. We'll discover the true bounty of a beautiful bouquet and pick out paint colors for a very special project. Plus, we'll dole out a TV Free Stuff prize pack featuring awesome new material from two stellar East Coast stars. Planting, painting, flowers and fashion, it must be springtime on CNBC TV. And what would spring be without a little sprucing up? So we're doing just that today and helping a friend get her Chester retail space all set for selling. We'll head inside to tackle the painting in just a bit, but first up, the planting portion of this project, and it's twofold. There are some great planter boxes on the property, one I'd like to fill with flowers, and in the other, grow a garden full of great things to eat. No one better than the year-round vegetable gardener herself, Nikki Jabour, to get things going and growing. If you listen really carefully, you can hear spring showers. <laughs> hey? Literally, I can hear spring showers. On the roof here at Ocean View, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, our gardening expert extraordinaire, Nikki Jabour, and we need her help. Uh, I'm here for you, Stephanie. What about that box? It's grim, right? It's not grim. You already okay. have a built raised bed. It's better to have a raised bed, oh, or does it matter? I'm all about raised beds. Okay. Really? First of all, there's less bending and stooping. Uh, and it's like an instant garden and you can control the soil and what you put into it. The soil drains better. Your okay. vegetables aren't sitting in wet feet then, your plants. It warms up earlier in the spring and it, you know, it succumbs to frost later in the fall. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons to grow in a raised bed. Okay, now I didn't put that in there, um, but just hypothetically, if I'm in my own yard yes. and I want to raise a bed, am I? is there a bottom to it or no? Usually it depends what your, what your existing situation is. Usually okay. there's no bottom. I'm building 12 new raised beds on my property this year. I use cardboard as the bottom. Oh. Which will eventually rot away, but it'll right. also smother the grass that's there now. Okay. So you can use that as a base, and then I'm going to have a wooden, you know, a surround for the bed, wooden right. edging, 18 inches tall. Fill it up with my good garden soil and compost, okay. and I'm ready to plant. All right. Well, I am not ready to plant, <laughs> clearly, because what we've got in there, as you can see, is like a bunch of uh, weeds, and it's pretty low, right? I need to bring up the soil level, or what I do I would. need to do? It looks okay. like it hasn't actually been gardened in a couple of years. Yeah. That's fine. Okay. Obviously, you know you need to get rid of the weeds. Okay. That won't take too long. Do I need to get rid of the soil that's there? The soil is probably all right. Okay. You could do a soil test. You know, you can actually get your soil tested. But that, that sounds like that's sad. <laughs> I can't. I'm hard enough right. growing. You're going to want to add a bit of lime to your garden lime. bed. It's probably acidic. You want to add some, follow the box directions or okay. the bag directions. Right. Uh, and that'll tell you how much lime to add. Okay. Not too much, really. But. Okay. And that sort of goes in mixed amongst it? or it, It'll get mixed amongst it. It'll okay. get washed in by the rain. And it'll okay. just raise the soil pH up to a manageable level, which vegetables need to grow. You'll also want to add some organic matter. Okay. Bags of compost, bags of aged manure from your garden center. That'll help. Okay. All right. Probably at least three to that bed, I would say. Yeah, to, okay. to bring it up. So, bring like, how up. far below the lip do you want it, ideally? Uh, you know, it could be a couple inches. Okay. But I would use, like, a pitchfork and fluff it up and mix it all in there, like you're mixing up a big, you know, batch of soup or something. And I let that sit for a bit before you I plant? You plant right away. Okay, but not now. Not yet. It's still a little bit early. You're going to okay. want to plant. Most vegetables get planted usually in May to early June. Okay. And we'll talk about what you should grow in there. Yeah. But one more thing I would add as well. Okay. I would add some organic fertilizer. Something slow release that's going to feed your plants most of the season. Okay, and, and then I don't have to worry about it again? Exactly. <gasps> I love that. So work it in when you're working in your lime and working in your compost, and okay. you're good to go. Okay. Very perfect gardening environment. All right, very good. We're talking trends today, too, in colors and fashion and stuff like yep. that. There's trends in seeds? There's trends in gardening, and, you know, the okay. biggest trend for this year is, I mean, growing edibles is, is a, a permanent trend at this point, but yes. the biggest trend is growing for the pollinators and the good bugs. Oh, yes. You know, and, I love and so, bees. Yes, we, we love the bees and the bugs. 
butterflies. Yes. And so we can certainly plant things that are in our vegetable gardens that are also going to support and entice their population. Like what? Oh my goodness, like parsley, like dill, like a lot of flowers amongst your vegetables. Sweet alyssum, calendula, nasturtiums, cosmos, sunflowers. Nasturtiums you can eat, right? You can eat the leaves, you can those. eat the flowers, you can yes. eat the seeds. Yep. So now let's just say I want to grow some leaf lettuce, I want to yep. grow maybe some, I mean I don't you want to say. You want easy things. Yes, that's it. Okay. I, I, was, I didn't want to say that out loud, but I need something that I can't <laughs> worry about. Am I insulting I, you? No, 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 no. Okay, because I'm a rookie and also I am the worst with green things. You are but not. But I want to grow. Not. I want to, I want to embrace this. This is your new best friend. Okay. It's Swiss chard. Swiss chard, you can direct seed in early spring. Okay. It's going to grow in spring. Define direct seed. Take a seed and you put it in the ground, about a half an inch deep, okay. you know, and, uh, and it's going to grow for you very reliably. Okay. And that is going to grow about two feet tall. This is a rainbow <gasps> form, so it's got oh. electric pink, hot yellow stems. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, the sidekick will love that. Oh, she will love it. And yeah. it's going to grow in spring, okay. it's going to grow in summer, and it's going to grow in fall. Oh, the wow. The same plants. You just keep harvesting the outer leaves and the center of the plant will continue growing. Wow. So okay. crazy. So what else are some low maintenance? Low maintenance, kale. Easy to grow? Super easy Is to grow. Is that true? It's very easy to grow. Wow. And it's, again, it's cold tolerant. It's going to go all spring, summer, and fall for you. It's very architectural, especially the dinosaur kale. It kind of looks like a palm tree as it grows. Okay. Very pretty. But this is this is going to take up some space. Uh, I would only put probably two kale plants in that garden, especially okay. if you're not a huge fan. Yeah. But you could plant, say, ten seeds and eventually thin them down to two okay. plants. This is easy as well. Oh, it, I love that. Now, see mixture, that? Yeah. yeah. And this is how you can save money. If you eat a lot of salads. I do. Growing your own, like, baby greens is quick and easy. Okay. You sprinkle the seeds over the soil surface, scratch them in just gently water them, boom. And that's done. it. Now, where I am right now with that box, you can see it, the sunlight is kind of a, it's a, it's a well, I don't know, to be quite frank. I don't think it's direct. I think it kind of comes and goes. It looks like it's got some shading from a building, which means right. that building shade is solid, deep shade. And that's not good. But the question is, is it morning? shade? Is it afternoon shade? Is it all day shade? Right. And that's going to affect the seeds. And it, it says that on the package though, right? It will say full sun, partial shade. Okay. Most food crops like full sun. However, okay. certain things like I've picked out for you here, all of the greens, most greens will tolerate partial shade. Okay. So you can deal with the greens like this. Okay. Um, you know, you could also grow parsley in partial shade. Okay. But the heat lovers, the tomatoes, anything that makes a fruit, like a pepper or a cucumber. Needs the sun. Needs the sun. Okay. That's a general rule of thumb. So wish me well. Good you, luck. Is there a garden prayer well, that you say? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll keep track of you and you okay. can tweet me anytime. Really? Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely fun. Aw, she's the best. And if you're planning on growing your own veggies this summer, well, I highly recommend Nikki's latest book, Groundbreaking Food Gardens. It comes complete with 73 plans that will change the way you grow. So many wonderful ideas in there. And no matter what your pleasure, you'll find the seed to fit the bill here at Ocean View Home and Garden Center in Chester. Susan and Ken Mosier are celebrating their 17th season on the South Shore, and they've got everything you need to get grown up a storm but can they help me with that planter box i wonder pretty grim right it, that's pretty grim easy fix though it's actually easy, really? easy fix because yeah. i look at it and it just looks like a jungle nope okay what do i do is it Dig it out, get rid of everything that's in it, okay. soil everything right to the bottom. Is that true? Yep. Okay, because Nikki said I just needed to do soil topsoil, but in this one no. Did she she was vegetable soil? Yes. Right? Yeah. Plants um, are different. Flowers have much deeper roots. Okay. And if you want perennials, you need something that's long lasting. Okay. When I clear it out yep. and there's nothing in there, where do I start? You're gonna you're gonna take it out. Hopefully there's already drainage in the bottom. Okay, and what and what if there isn't? Then you would add drainage. You would add large stones or something like that okay. for drainage. And I'm talking down probably about 18 inches, maybe two feet. Okay. That box is pretty high. Yes. Then put in a layer of soil. Okay. About probably a foot down from the top. You want a nice layer of compost. And then you add soil again. Not a garden soil, not like a top soil, but something really like rich. a grower's mix or something okay. like that. Okay. And something that's easy to work with. And that's because it's above the ground? Right. Okay. Right. The the garden garden topsoil is very heavy. Okay. So you don't want heavy. No. And you want the plants to grow quickly so they need a good um, soil with lots of air space for the roots to go down. Okay. But with the layer of compost about a foot down, what happens is you plant, your, your root ball is about this big. Right. And then the roots instantly want to reach for that compost. Oh. 
Which so you, helps them grow. Exactly. And Susan helped with my flower plants too, recommending a mix of consecutive perennials like the spring blooming leopard spain, the summer blooming coneflower, and the Japanese anemone to grow into the fall. Then just pepper in some annuals to fill in the flowers to keep my box in bloom throughout the growing season. I feel good. Do you feel good about me doing this? Absolutely. Complete I, faith. Here's what I love <laughs> is that you're like four minutes away. So I can <laughs> quickly run and then if any of the viewers drive by, I'll continually have fresh plants there. there. They go. won't know that I've <clears throat> killed them off on a regular basis. One of the best things you can do if yes. you want consecutive blooming yes. is to visit the garden center once a week, once every two weeks and buy what is in bloom. Oh. And then you have bloom right straight through from spring till fall with your perennials. I like that. It is the best thing that you right. can do. Still ahead on CNBC, we'll make the most of a beautiful bunch of flowers at My Mother's Bloomers, and we'll find out the latest in fashion trends from our great friends at Foreign Affair. Well, we all know that clothing designers change styles from season to season, but you may be surprised to discover that interior designers set the same kind of trends. And as North America's favorite brand of paint, Benjamin Moore sets the tone with their color of the year. Benjamin Moore is simply white, is simply perfect, so we've chosen it as our main color. We'll cover up those tired yellow walls and brighten up the space for sure. And to cover up that burgundy, we've chosen the sweetest bird's egg blue. Chester Building Supplies is our local Benjamin Moore retailer, so we called their paint specialist Denny Myra to walk us through what we need to get the job done right. Denny, we have gone with the color of the year. That's Which, awesome. Is it? Is it awesome? It's very nice Are you happy? Do, every year do you get really excited to see what it is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's simply white. It's a warmer white, which I really like. And that's going to be our main color here. Mm -hmm. And then we've gone, Denny, and I don't know how you feel about this, because do you ever get like, what are you thinking? Do you ever say that when somebody picks out a paint color? Not out loud. Okay. I'll wait until they leave. Okay, very good. <laughs> and we've gone with the, the bird's egg. It's like a blue. A couple of challenges uh, with this face. Um, would you say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I love painting. I love putting a brand new coat of paint. There's nothing beats it. Immediately what panics me is this dark color, Denny, mm -hmm. um, because I know I got some challenges versus the light yellow. That shouldn't be too bad in terms of coverage, but right. what am I faced with here? If you want to be sure yeah. uh, to get away with a minimum of two coats, I would prime that white first with a primer. Okay. Um, if you mute it with a white primer, it's a good chance that a single coat of your next color, being a dark color, would take care of it. Okay. However, you could, with a product such as the Advance product, you could grade over that there. What's the Advance? What's that all about? Uh, it's a hybrid oil. Now, okay. don't let me scare you by saying oil. Okay. It's the chemical makeup or the makeup of the uh, product. Right. Um, it gives you the durability of uh, the old malamine finishes. Um, when you apply it, it flows nice and smooth. Very durable. Okay. And clean up? Soap and water. Really? Wow, that's awesome. Well, we're going from a dark to a light color, so white primer is fine. But if we are going light to dark, Denny recommends tinting your primer to ensure fewer coats to cover. And how about this? The flatter the finish, the more forgiving the paint. So Denny recommends we're best with an eggshell, given the nail holes and nicks we'll need to fix before we start. As for applying the paint, Denny recommends the versatile two and a half inch angled brush for cutting in, and then going with a permanent tray with a disposable liner for our roller. As for the pile of the roller, well, that depends. The lower the pile, the smoother the finish. Okay. So if you have a really, really smooth finish that, you know, no imperfections or whatever, and you use a five mil roller sleeve, you're fine. It's like makeup. Exactly. I exactly. love it. I, that I can relate to. <laughs> However, they do, not, <laughs> they do not hold the paint as well. Oh. So you're constantly going back to your right. tray and re, you know, right. sort of thing. Um, but with a thicker pile, mm -hmm. um, a rookie could make some serious gaffes, right? If they've got it sopped up with paint, that's Absolutely. the, that's the Absolutely. other challenge, right? And you got you to be careful. There's a lot of, you know, back rolling, taking care of you know, ridges that your roller sleeve may leave if you have too much paint on the sleeve sort of thing, yeah. Depending on the product you're using, a lot of the newer paints out there are really fast drying paint. Okay. So you got to be very careful that if you're alone doing your painting, you don't get too far ahead of yourself. You got to cut in, roll, cut in, roll, sort of thing. You oh, can't I can't go, cut in the whole 
room? I love to do some products, that. Some products you can. Okay. However, they dry too quickly, and by the time you come back and roll to your cut-in, it leaves a flash mark, and you see two different colors. Uh -huh. So you've got to be very careful. Ah, okay. It, painting is always good with a buddy. Right. Well, I probably will be doing this solo, um, but, I don't, but I don't mind that either. It's going to be a lot of work, but so worth it. You can track the progress of our retail space spruce up on CNBC.com and on Twitter, too. Well, if you follow floral designer Neville McKay on Twitter, at Level Neville, you know he's got a brand new retail space, and it's spectacular. Coming up after the break, we'll head to Sophie's Place on Spring Garden Road for a marvelous visit to the new home of my mother. Bloomers. So you've got your spring flowers, cool water is fine. If you use warm water, they'll pop open that much faster. It's like having them out on a sunny day, okay. all of a sudden you see them bloom open. Same thing. Stand so you just reason. give them a fresh cut, okay. always give them a fresh cut, right. and put them within 30 seconds in water. If you cut these and put them down and lay them down and call the neighbors and say, guess what, Jimmy got me flowers. <laughs> You know, by then they'll get a they'll get a bit of scab on them, okay. and they won't they won't accept food and water as readily. And it's that easy. Okay. Yeah. Once they're in, I mean, and always cut your tulips a little shorter than what you think they should be in the vase, because why? like I said, they'll grow. Oh, they'll grow. Okay. They'll grow, and they'll just they'll do their thing. These these will, if I bend them over this way, they'll stand up straight by tomorrow. They'll be all like this, and then in two or three days they'll right. start to relax and enjoy the idea of being they're a cut beautiful. flower in a vase. But they're so simple yeah. to work with. I love them. So simple. You're watching TV One. Your community station. Neville, let's mm -hmm. just say hypothetically, Jimmy's more generous and buys me a gigantic bouquet. Well, you know, I love that. Better days are coming, you never know, right? <laughs> Who is Jimmy, by the way, and how can I get his Oh, number? Jimmy's a kind old soul, he really is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you have a bouquet like this, a lot of people will pick up a market bouquet. Yeah. Um, perhaps here at this place, but, but you can pick up a market bouquet anywhere. When you get them home, remove all that packaging because, of course, as lovely as it is, it's packaging. So we'll just put that right down. And if you want to give that a fresh cut, you could give that a fresh cut and drop it right in, wow. which is lovely. Or we but can see, just not everybody's uh, uh, has the beautiful ribbon no, like that's my mother's it. bloomers. That's right? just it. So not everybody has a dull knife And they've knife arranged like me. it. Oh, look out now. What? It wasn't courage, you, was it? <laughs> it's only a matter of time. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you haven't said anything bad yet. No, You're good. No, I'm really trying hard. <laughs> so once we got that, that apart, okay. you've got all these wonderful, look at all the wonderful flowers to work with. Yeah. You've got tulips and hydrangeas and baby's breath and all sorts of things. So you can just take, look at that hydrangea. This is gorgeous. It is. So Jimmy was smart because he knows that you like to arrange flowers at home. So we're going to take all those flowers apart. Right. Those wonderful hydrangeas. Yes. These are hydrangea macrophilia. Yes. They come from, as you know, they come And they're from heavy America. drinkers. They're heavy drinkers. Girl. I never forget that. Because you never forget I, that. Because we're like kindred spirits, me and the hydrangea. So let's just take a little <laughs> bit of this salal foliage. This is salal foliage. What was that woman's name? Something, something, something Stewart. Anyway, it doesn't matter. She makes ponchos now. Um, <laughs> she refers to this as, le <laughs> as, oh, as wow. lemon leaf. We need so, a moment of silence now. You're disparaging Martha. <laughs> But statistically, you shouldn't put, your, uh, okay. as a rule, foliage underwater. But foliage that is very, very leathery, like this, right. this is very leathery, yep. that'll survive well underwater. Okay. It survives very, very well underwater. Cut those hydrangeas short because, like you said, yep. they are a heavy drinker. Drinkers. Something that I think Jimmy understands as well. So once they go in there, poor Jimmy, they are going to. They're, they're well, that's uh, easy. Look at that. See, so you've got but a beautiful makes arrangement. It look, yes, I know. So then you could take your tulips if you wanted to, right? Because again, you know, if you want to put them in a vase and just drop them in, then go ahead. Right. But you want to do something a little different. You just put those off to the side. You go right in there. That creates an imbalance. I love so, it. A little imbalance, but so by taking this wonderful Ulster Mary and again cutting it off short and putting that over here. So you've got a very contemporary yeah. design using and you've only just used a parts. portion See? of it. That's what I love because so, now you can work it out. Exactly. Oh, look at that. Give us that vase, that one. That's beautiful. This gigantic. That one right there, my darling. Oh my God, it's big. Look at that. And you're going to do that because you're going to take a few stones. <gasps> Nobody know. said there'd be work. Well, do you know what? You, you got to do what you got to do. So you just put those stones. Don't drop them. I in, was just going to say. I don't know. Hmm. There, that's lovely. Look at that. Is that, that. And, enough? Well, what this so, does, okay. Stephanie, this, although they're heavy, yes. so it creates, there is physical weight attached to it. It gives a visual anchor. Right. So it makes it heavier at the bottom because you could put some flowers inside the glass. Wow. And we're going to cut this piece of green. See, it's pretty already. It's almost like a frog below. It just, it doesn't, right? doesn't, Would it, it act just, as that? Well, like, you know, to hold your flowers in various places. A bit of an armature. Yeah. Armature. So, Whenever you have flowers <gasps> under glass, 
Yes. Uh, especially in the winter when it's cold and it's forced air dry heating, it allows, as the water evaporates, it allows the flowers to hold their moisture. So they last longer. Wow. So then, my darling, you can take a few of your tulips, and again, you're gonna just take those and cut those a little shorter than they need to be. Okay. Arrange them in your hand. You're Look gonna just that. drop just, those in? Just drop those right in. Oh, wow. Look how pretty that is. Come on. Look how pretty that is. And they will, they will um, get used to being in that container right. and grow up through it. Beautiful. It's so simple. So you've got that and that. That's two. Look at that. And totally different. Totally different. Totally different. So you want to do something really different? Yes. We're going to take this container, take this wonderful wire. So listen, now you saw what I did. That okay. I just, I just in my, in my worry of what you're going to say next, <laughs> I just took that wire, that beautiful aluminum wire, and dropped that right in to create a bit, again, a bit of a crisscrossing and armature. armature. But isn't it pretty? It's great. It's pretty. Then you just add your water. Just as, ah, let's put a lot in. Why not? We've got okay. it. Because that wire is in there, it's, it's going to hold those in place. Look at that. And then just by adding a couple of flowers in, so you've got that, and that's a very contemporary look because you're enjoying all the stems, you can see everything, and the wire as well. Beautiful. Now, let's do one more. Okay. It's all from one Look bouquet. at these little tiny daisies. Look There's... at that. Grab that little vase there. I'm going to set this down This here. is a vase? Yes, it is. Oh, my. Do you know that's called a log vase? And I'll tell you, years ago, Look I saw that. this in a magazine in the United States, and I thought, oh, I'm getting that because it was called a pansy vase. Wow. You can only imagine how much fun I'd have with that. <laughs> Because it is designed, it's just a log-shaped vase with holes in it, yes. designed for smaller stems of flowers like crocuses or pansies or And how whatnot. lovely in the middle of your dining room beautiful, table. Beautiful, beautiful. Right? So then you can just take, if you wanted to take, let's see, let's take some of this. What's this called? That's baby's breath. Yes. What's the other name for uh, it? Uh, breath of the baby. Do you know in some parts of the world they call it inf infant's breath, which I think is really weird, um, but it's known as gypsophila or baby's breath. Okay. So just take your little tufts and put those right in there, okay. in those holes. All four of them? Yeah, You're gonna sure. Fill okay. Mm -hmm. Excuse my back reach. Ooh, so simple, isn't that lovely? Yes. Now let's just take a few of these daisies and we'll do the same thing. So I'll just cut those and you can just drop those right in, in those holes. In just the, in the midst of the in. business? Yep. Okay. You just cluster, look at that, how pretty. You just tuck <gasps> those right in. Come on! I know. I know, this and that's such a beautiful, proof. beautiful little lot, little vase. I gotta get one of these. Someone did ask me. They said, "How do you clean that vase?" Oh, it's so easy, my is darling. Is that true? Yeah, get the kids to do it. Get someone else to do it. Or you know, here's the thing: use a little poly dent. You know those little denture tabs that the, that people yes. that people use. Put that's a bit of that in, idea. and that just takes the. That okay, just that's crazy town. How easy that was. I know, but but it's so pretty, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and you, you still can, have you more add, flowers and left. And we still have more because now you can put this in a bud vase if you wanted to. This is the more is more approach to the bouquet. I love it. Well, you know, that's just it because so many times we'll see these beautiful bouquets and people will just pop it in the vase and be done with it. Now you've I got mean, flowers for one, two, three, four rooms, five rooms. Yes, and my darling, look at this. Look. You too could be a flower girl. A little look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Right? And we can just tuck those. Nothing says spring like a visit to my mother's bloomers. My darling. Evelyn look at McKay, that. you're the sweetest thing on the planet. <laughs> hey? That's look just, at me, I'm like Mother just Earth. Hot. Yeah, peace, baby. <laughs> Well, needless to say, we could have talked all day with Neville. You'll find our extended chat with Mr. McKay and all our experts on CNBC.com. We've also got some great how-to videos with Neville, so check those out for sure. Another thing you might notice when you check out the site is how decked out I am at all the film festivals and award shows. Well, that's thanks to the fine folks at Foreign Affair. They get me red carpet ready, and every spring we check in to see what's in style for the season. We're talking fashion. It's springtime. Marjorie Torrance, she's our gal to go to when it comes to what's in for spring, summer. Really going to take us through those two seasons. I am going to take you through spring, summer because there's too many trends to keep, to keep I know. straight. Well, that's just it. Okay, so normally we come to a season and we say there's this, 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 and this, but it seems to be a huge like cornucopia, if you will, of clothing. <laughs> it is a cornucopia okay. of, of clothing and pattern. And looks, a pat pattern, right? Pedal pushing. I saw somewhere. Yes, we're pushing pedals, Bit. apparently. Oh. Okay. The pajama look is strong. Right. You're seeing it in blazers, you're okay. seeing it in blouses, and you're also seeing pajama style pants. But today, I chose only to give you a jacket. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, and this is, you're going to say this is a dress. This is and a dress. And I'm going to say this is scantily clad. This is a slip dress. A slip dress. Which, again, is a new, okay. it's a newer for spring, and you're seeing a lot. I have read the word 
boudoir. You That's have. Not, not just for the bedroom anymore. It's not just it's for the bedroom. It's for the boardroom. It's no. A, no, well, not quite. I say perhaps Depends in the evening. Depends on your business, <laughs> right? <laughs> Depends on what business. <laughs> Won't judge. All right, very good, very good. So these are two things that you're seeing a lot of in the magazines and on blogs and right. what's trending. So the nude, perfect little dress, and then you can do the pajama jacket. You could do anything over it. You could do a basic long blazer. You could do a cardigan. You, if you're brave, you could wear it just as is once it warms up a little bit. So it's a good little uh, base piece. Right. Now this is very Carrie, very Sex in the City. Very, right? that yes. That blush color. We have nicknamed it the nude dress. And this is, of course, our Canadian designer Smythe. Nice. Which okay. we often do a lot of the Smythe jackets. You do. And we just put a little statement necklace there just to fill in the neckline if you don't want to be so bare. Yeah. I'm just going to say I'm in style. Of course you are. Because I've got the same color palette. I always get a little nervous coming to Foreign <laughs> Affair that I'm not going to come up to the standard. But you always get me, you know, focused in the right direction. But khaki? Of course. Okay. A little bit of khaki, okay. which is great. Yeah. But you know, you often see a little bit of khaki every season. Sometimes you see a little bit of the animal influence of the camel. This year is a little more on the leisure wear. Is it peekaboo? Because I noticed that you're <laughs> you it the is peekaboo look. Cold shoulder. Cold, cold shoulder. shoulder is the buzzword this spring, and you'll see it going forward into fall as well, okay. which is kind of a nice change because you're showing a little bit of skin, but you're covered up. A new designer? It's a new designer for us. Her name is Dorothy Schumacher. She's German. A lot of the celebrities like to wear her. So it has a little bit of interest, like a lot of German things, a little bit of interest. It's not crazy. It's right. not going to date itself. Could wear this casual as well? Definitely. be great okay. with jeans. Right. Okay. With a pair of shorts. If you're but, traveling, great. And you've paired it with Lots. I have. Marjorie, I, well, they're here. They're still here. <laughs> they're still here. And they're nice and light. And I went with lighter on the on the bottom for a change because you're seeing a lot of those pointed little lace-up shoes that yes. you wear with your culotte. And it's a nice change. It's summery. It's not traditional black and white or navy and white. You have a good neutral, two good neutrals it's together. It's got the lovely flow. Exactly. Right? And we put a necklace in just to change it up. I a love little brass. That necklace. Yeah. It's a little bit of a change. Not everybody would want to do that. They might want to show a little more skin with that. But depending on the gal, right? That would keep things sort of anchored. That's beautiful. Who can turn the world on <laughs> with your smile? Is that all right? I'm thinking Mary I'm sorry. Tyler Moore. We don't have the tam. <laughs> sorry. I love this. It's all about the bold stripes oh, this man. season. And yes, so, I think Mary Tyler Moore would have yes. this in the 70s for sure. A nice colored jacket oh, like that. It's a power jacket. It is a power and jacket. And gold, reds, and blues. That's that's in. Yeah, it's very the bold stripes you're seeing a lot. Okay. And bold colors. So there you go. Wow. Your navy and your red. That's bold. Yeah. But it's also fresh. You it, know, it is spring. Bring on a little color. Power jacket, very structured. And then the lace top underneath, that's cool. Well, the world's not so corporate at the moment. Okay. And I think the real fashion girls are mixing it up. Like, okay. if they don't have to be corporate, corporate, then they're just changing up a bit. We're still very presentable. We're yes. covered. There's no, you know, I mean, right. there's a little skin, but there's no cleavage. You could go to work. You could wear, where couldn't you wear that? Yeah, it's exactly. so sweet. And with the new crop flare pants. Okay. You need to stop now because okay. there's too many cuts. There's too many. Crop flare. Yeah. Okay. So you're wearing your pant a little shorter. Okay. Well, it's above your ankle and has a little flare. So it's a different silhouette. Well, I love it. It's denim. It is denim. <laughs> and denim is always in. It's a perennial fave. Is it that is fair? A, yes. And okay. we cannot do a segment with not introducing a new denim. Right. Now, I was thinking skinny. I went with skinny because the last number of seasons I've been in, and I finally wear them, and now... Now that we're on to something new. See? That's just... But could I get a... No, I couldn't get away with them. Why couldn't... With the skinny? Yeah. Of course you can get away with okay. skinny. You so still we continue. Oh, but for this sure. is the fresh look. This is Denny. a fresh look, and this okay. is a fresh look for spring, too. Okay. The crop flare, which we've already seen in the red pants. Yeah, but these are frayed. And these are frayed, which is great. You're also seeing released hem this season, too. This is so sweet and light. Isn't it pretty? Yeah. And again, we have a print. A really feminine little shirt here that you can do with your little crop flare. Right. It's a great little summer outfit. Yes. And because we live in the Maritimes, you generally need a jacket. Now, this is a <laughs> Bomber style, it's a bomber right? I jacket. remember the bomber being very big. But the bomber jacket's great. It's a little shorter, show off the booty a little bit. Right. You're seeing lots of colors in them. You're seeing a lot of floral. Again, back to all the floral print. Right. So, and again, it's a change it, a little bit away from everything so fitted. It's great. So, Marjorie, spring, summer 2016, what yes. do I need in my wardrobe? You need a crop flare, you need a bold print, and some floral. And some floral. So 
Feminine? Yes. For sure. Definitely. Structure? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. But I can mix and match and feel good about it. For sure you can mix and match. It's not, there isn't a, you have to be this. Okay. These are your components. Wear them how you choose. Marjorie, you always know what's going on. Thank you for taking the time to, to inspire us to be trendy and, and also fashionable and fabulous. My pleasure. It's Foreign Affair. <laughs> it's Marjorie Torrance. <laughs> Time to dole out some TV free stuff, and we've got two awesome prizes from two stellar East Coast stars, both with something brand new to celebrate. First up from Mabu Cape Breton, the youngest of the mega award-winning Rankin family. Heather Rankin, who after two decades in the music industry and more than a million records sold, has finally released her debut CD. Heather Rankin's A Fine Line showcases a whole new sound, and having co-written seven of the 11 tracks on the project, fans can truly appreciate her incredible talents. The first single, a remake of the Tears for Fear smash, Everybody Wants to Rule the World, features Nova Scotia rapper Quake Matthews and a whole lot of Heather's fans and followers. That's cool stuff for sure. And always the coolest cat at any concert, the pride of Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, Mr. Joel Plaskett. The multi-award winning singer, songwriter and producer, not to mention Supreme Commander at the New Scotland Yard Studios, is the subject of a brand new biography, Nowhere With You. Globe and Mail reporter Josh O'Kane's much anticipated book is a celebration of the beloved Canadian icon featuring dozens of original interviews and exclusive photos. Hey and mark your calendars as the the book's official launch is set for Saturday, April 16th at the Carlton in Halifax. It's a free event, and you better believe both Josh and Joel will be there for all the fun. Talk about your cool reads. All right, so we've got a signed copy of Heather Rankin's debut CD, A Fine Line, and a copy of the new Joel Plaskett biography, Nowhere With You, both of which could be yours if you can tell us. What's the name of the paint color I'll be using to paint the main walls of the retail space? Once you know it, hit the website at cnbc.com, click on the TV Free Stuff button, and submit your answer. Good luck to ya, and we'll be right back. You're watching TV One, your community station. This episode of CNBC TV is brought to you in part by... Benjamin Moore, North America's favorite paint, color, and coatings brand. Renowned for its expansive color portfolio, offering consumers and designers more than 3,500 colors. Find paint and expertise like no other at an authorized Benjamin Moore retailer near you. Visit BenjaminMoore.com today. And by Chester Building Supplies, a member of Castle, Canada's fastest growing lumber, building materials, and commercial buying group. Whether you're looking for lumber, building materials, hardware, or advice, you'll find just what you need at Chester Building Supplies. Located at 3797 Highway 3 in Chester, Nova Scotia, or online at castlecbs.com. Well, that'll just about do it for our spring special. Nothing left to do now but get to work. I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on CNBC. And then you can stick in some more bush beans okay. in July, you know? Okay. And then these will give you bush beans through August and September. Okay, yeah. all right. So succession planting, that's a whole other topic. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and I think we need a cocktail for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And it's not so fitted, fitted. Okay. So you, you get a little bit I of shape I call that forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I call it comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I use my yogurt containers or my coffee containers, which I have a few of. And that will work. Okay. Now this here has a oh, handy little handle. Oh, it's very handle. Oh, no, and I like that. throw away liners. See? You can't beat it. All right. This is this is a pro in action. <laughs> okay. Are we talking roses now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. it's like I'm, they turn. I'm not kidding you. They turn. It's like... It's a sign. Don't... I'm just saying. Not everybody's supposed to have roses, but look, tulips, tulips perform wonderfully well for you. I love it's like not everybody can eat rice, I guess, you know, but other people can eat noodles. I don't know, but see, have tulips. Tulips, tulips. or carnations, the forgiving okay. flower. Carnations right? will hang on like a bad relationship. Right. Oh. They really do. Look, it'll be a <laughs> Right? Let's not dwell. <laughs>